What's up everybody? This is Kristen Marie, Certified Sex Therapist, bringing you the Sex Myth Series this year where every week we are taking down one annoying sex myth after another and together we will discover what the real truth is. Alrighty, so this week's myth is it is a failure to not have an orgasm. So what we're basically taking on here is knowing how to be pleasure oriented during sexual experiences versus goal oriented. A lot of people get really wrapped up in the to-do list of life and sexual experiences is no exception. There is a large spectrum of pleasurable and connecting sexual acts um, and experiences that do not have to include orgasm. Um, but a lot of people skip over this information or don't even think about it uh, because they're so um, concerned with getting to that end result that they are missing out on such a wide uh, range of, of really pleasurable and connecting experiences. When people start to catch on to this, they notice that they just want to be close to each other and share pleasurable experiences with one another, and it can be very, very connecting. Um, a few um, myths ago, I went over the wedding cake that a colleague of mine uh, created with one of his colleagues. Um, remember the wedding cake where there are the four tiers of connection um, of happy, healthy couples um, that are happy within the sexual realm. Um, and if you remember, the bottom tier is that foundational piece of why you ended up with this person or decided to be with this person in the first place. Um, that second tier is uh, shared closeness and affection. And the third is foreplay leading up to um, intercourse. Um, of course, this is for um, mostly for long-term uh, couples. So when people remain kind of goal-oriented where it's either make or break to the sexual experience if, if one or both of the partners had an orgasm, they're really skipping over those, those two middle um, areas of the, of the relationship that, that are just stock full of pleasurable and connecting experiences. This leads to a lot of couples getting pretty stuck in, in, in an all or nothing um, pattern and it really ends up robbing them of a lot of uh, shared pleasure and experiences. Um, it increases a lot of pressure and uh, duty and really can bring in a lot of anxiety to the sexual experience. So for people who end up uh, really trying to embrace the pleasure-oriented um, mindset of the sexual experience, um, they, they somehow conceptualize uh, that sometimes there's going to be an orgasm and sometimes there's not. You know, whether there needs to actually be an, an orgasm um, is, is really not something that is present for them uh, during that, in that experience. But something that is present for them is the, the sharing of pleasure, the, of giving pleasure and receiving pleasure. And that connection um, can, be, can be very powerful um, for, for a couple. The ironic piece is too that changing the mindset from goal-oriented to pleasure-oriented actually may increase the chances of experiencing an orgasm. Now there are some people out there who are experiencing difficulty achieving orgasm and it is not the to-do list that is getting in the way. Um, factors that can inhibit orgasm are, there, there are so many. And some of those include stress, inexperience, acting out of duty, um, insecurity, pressure, inadequate lubrication, pain, medications and biochemistry, and, and these are only to name a few. And to give some really, uh, I think, important examples, the, the pain, medications and biochemistry, if you feel like you're experiencing any of those, please see a medical uh, provider before uh, moving on to any sort of other um, um, thing you might be trying to help, um, the, what, what you might be perceiving as the problem. Um, there are qualified medical providers that can, can certainly help diagnose what might be going on if there's any sort of pain um, and if me medications have, have come on board and that could really um, impact a, uh, the, a person's ability to experience orgasm. So the purpose of challenging today's myth is to highlight that there's so much more to sexuality and intimacy than adding to the to-do list. Uh, changing the purpose of intimacy to, to sharing pleasure or uh, changing the mindset to pleasure-oriented versus goal-oriented is a game-changer for so many people. Um, if you feel you, like you might be falling into the trap of goal-oriented sexuality, uh, see if changing your mindset to being pleasure-oriented uh, changes things up for you. All right, that's all we have for today's myth. I hope you continue to enjoy some of the information that is shared here, and by the end of the year, who knows, you might end up feeling just a little more sexually informed. All right, rock on.